Check, check. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome to the 39th BCA Pool League, USA Pool League National Championships. Ken Schumann here along with Bobby Cotton. Good morning, everybody, and Ken. Good morning, Bobby. And uh, I'd like to say thanks to all of you who were with us yesterday and especially for our uh, challenge match last night, the uh, Kamui Challenge. That was uh, some match. And we'll talk about that maybe later on in the day. But right now, let's let you know what you're going to see here. This is the USA Pool League. And this is eight ball is the discipline. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the USA Pool League, I'm going to do my best here to explain to you the scoring. You can see on the bottom of your score, scoreboard there, it says race to 66 and race to 81. What those are is those are the points that the respective players have to reach in order to win the, win the match. Are you okay, Vincent? Got a little uh, magic rack training going on out there. But uh, let me uh, take that opportunity to explain how this scoring system works. So they're playing eight ball. Uh, eight ball is still played the same conventional way with the same rules, all the stripes, etc., all of that. But the winner of the rack receives 14 points. Now what they're trying to do, of course, is reach their target number for Sandro 66 and for Jeff 81. So if, if you win the game, you get 14 points. Your opponent gets one point for each ball of his group that he pocketed during that game. So let's say Sandro makes three solids, misses, and Jeff runs out all the stripes in the eight ball. Jeff would get 14 points for winning the game Sandro would get three points for the three solids that he made. Then they would rack them up, of course, alternate break, and then and the next guy breaks. Now, the interesting aspect of this is in order to win the match, of course, you've got to get to your number before your opponent gets to his, but you have to win a rack to actually go out and win the match. Again, for example, let's say Sandro is going into the, this particular rack and he's got 65 points. And let's say Jeff's got, still got like 50. Sandro cannot win the match simply by making one ball. He has to win the rack to win the match. So you have to go out, I guess is the best term I can use, on a game win to win the match. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll get to the point where both players, if both players are within 14 points of their number, they're basically both on the hill, and you have a hill-hill match. So... That's about as uh, basic of an explanation as I can offer you. And um, as we play, we'll update the score after each rack. Can't do it ball by ball, of course, but <laughs> it'll become even easier and more clear, I think, after the first rack. So thanks for bearing with us on that explanation. Hopefully you got it. We'll maybe repeat it as we go if necessary. And this is Jeff Hines at the table. Again, he is going for a target score of 81. 
So you can just do the math, and Jeff would have to win at least six racks to get to 81, or five racks and an accumulation of other balls made if his opponent were to win the, that particular game. Good explanation, Ken. Makes sense. Yes. Thanks, Bobby. Really. I appreciate it. It's, yeah, uh, it was, it's, it's not a little confusing, but you made it sound simple. Well, it took, took me a whole day to kind of <laughs> grasp it, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it was very foreign to me. I had not uh, been involved in doing any commentary on USA Pool because I don't <coughs> know that we've ever done it here before at the uh, national championships. <coughs> and they tell me, too, that historically... Uh, USA Pool League, I think, is in its fifth year now. Historically, a great percentage of the matches do go hill hill yeah. because of the unique scoring format. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so here's uh, Sandro. He has stripes. Right now, uh, Jeff has five points because he's made five solids. Now he's going to get those points, you know, regardless. He's either going to get 14 to win the rack or he'll get those. But this is Sandro. Nice little combination to get started. If if you shoot your ball and pocket the other guy's ball, does he get points for that? Yeah, it stays down just like it would so in any eight. Point. If in you any make a ball, he gets a point. If you make one of his, he gets the point for it. Yes. Okay. I'm talking to you. Okay. Good shot. It was a good shot there. <coughs> Let's see if he can draw this ball about six inches. Uh oh. Well, that's tough here. Yeah. Boy. I don't believe the eight goes in the corner. Well, the bigger problem is going to be making the 12. Yeah, I bet it makes it because he's going down there by the one. Right. He just uh, overdrew it a little bit. Nice camera shot there. Let's get back maybe to that close up. Yeah, you were right, Bobby. I mean, that's yeah. all he could do, though. He had to make the ball, and yeah. now he's now he's got he's got a bank. Well, look, now it'll go. He's got half a pocket. Yeah. These are tough shots, though. Shh, tell me about it, it. Even if you had the whole pocket, but oh, to yeah. shoot to shoot into the pocket, and you know that's shooting into that side of that pocket just makes it tougher than if you had the other half of oh, the pocket. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> the jaw won't help you here. He catches a point. Right. It's not going to go. Boy, he it might go. Good. That might go. That might go. He had it good, too. Okay. So now what we have for a score is Sandro's going to get 14 because he won the game. And there's one solid left on the table. So that means Jeff gets six. So the score will be Sandro 14, Jeff six. I actually like the scoring. Don't you? Yeah. Stephen, would you put your headset on, please? Thank you. And there you have it. This is 14 to 6 after the first rack. I like the person getting rewarded for, for making the six balls, even though he lost the game. Right. I like that part of it. Right. It, it, it gives you an incentive, you know, to fight for every ball in every rack. And I very much like the aspect of it where you can't win the match without winning a game. Mm -hmm. You can't just make a couple of balls to, mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. there.
following this match, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, we were go we are going to have for you um, the Women's Open Nine Ball Final. I don't know the names of the players yet. Uh, they may be determined, and I just haven't received the information, or maybe they haven't been determined. I, I think they have, but uh, nevertheless, that is it's scheduled for 11:15. A lot of that will depend on, you know, how quickly we proceed here. But that is our next match. Good break. He knocked the heck out of those balls. He sure did. Nothing goes. No. And like they all, the stripes are all jammed up. Yeah, but I think you got to take stripes, but you don't have an opening stripe to shoot. Yeah, he's probably just going to shoot the three. But you know what? I'm going to back off on that because I think solids will play easier. And you've got you've got the three ball. I'd shoot the four probably, Bobby, only because I'd like the three to use to open the eight fourteen. You know, from about where the four is. I mean, he made it. He probably had to shoot the three because it was his only shot. Mm -hmm. But the problem he'll face now is if even if he can use a ball to open that eight up, he's going to have to find himself an insurance ball. I don't think he's worried about it right now. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Because by the same token, his opponent can't get out. <coughs> Unless they do something, and they've got two clusters. It's gonna be kind of interesting. Well, I got a plan. I would make the one softly, come straight up the table a foot, cut the four on the side, and go into the eight, one rail, and the two's my insurance ball. Look at this, he might, yeah, he can't, won't go in the corner. Well, the only other thing here is play the two in the corner and draw back, and then play the four in the side and try to open the eight. That's a good shot there. That was a good shot. Unless I knew I could open the eight here, Bobby, I am not going to try to pocket this ball. I just try to lag it in front of the hole. Exactly. Yeah, he's in, I don't know what he's going to do here. He's I know a shot here. Yeah, rail first, kick the eight, have it glance off the 14 and go in Bank the corner. Bank the eight into the 14, eight goes right there. Yeah. It's like a one pocket type shot. Well, he may be banking on the fact that the that uh, those two stripes are tied up here on the foot rail. If I was Sandro, I would be playing safe now, trying to get myself a ball in hand where I could use the nine to open up the cluster. Mm -hmm. I just shoot the cue ball at the at the 12 there, Bobby, mm -hmm. and then the 15's got the eight blocked. Well, I'd, I'd bank the nine into those two balls and leave the cue ball by the side in the middle of the table. That might be all right if as long as the eight won't go cross side. Well, that's this is that's all right too, as long as he doesn't. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> he put it right back where that's it was. Pretty, that's pretty tricky there. Is this is this a shot you can play cross corner? Uh -huh, it goes. Yeah. He pointed somewhere. I'm not sure where. He maybe he's can double he banking it. I don't think he hit enough of it to bank it cross the corner. One rail. That's about as close as he can get. Yeah. I'm taking Sandro this match. Okay. 
I, I got to pick first yesterday, so. Don't say that so quick. I feel like okay. I trapped myself. <laughs> it's like like when a guy when a guy uh, bets all in and you, your chips get there before his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know you're in trouble. Yeah. You better get that ten ball, whatever, the fifteen ball. Excuse me. I'd actually save it to last. I wouldn't, but he, well, I'd shoot the 14 here, then the 15. I figured out a minute ago how you can tell the difference between the 14 and 15. They're There's different colors. That's one way. But, you know, like, for example, do you know, like, if you, if you take a color of a ball and add an 8 to it, it's the same color? You do know that, right? Gee, Bobby. Well, what? You never heard of that? Of course I know that. So the so the six balls the lime green. Yeah. At eight. Well, and I've known that court. too. It doesn't. St I thought knowing I the math doesn't make my <laughs> eyes see the colors differently. <laughs> but I I do know I do know what you're saying, and actually I, I I've relied on that many times. I thought I was doing something so smart just then. Well. It's like my hands are tied right now. I can't tell no stories. I can't do nothing. I'm just sitting here like a well, lump. You, 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 you can tell the story. No, I ain't doing it now. If you want a story, you got to pay for it. Oh, all right. Forget about it. If you want a story, buy the book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really? Well, I don't need to now. I've done so much commentary with you. I've <laughs> you probably I've, heard, I've heard the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet, Ken. <laughs> himself a little bit of a little bit of a pickle here. I bet. I, well, I wouldn't shoot this. No, no. Unless he just lags it, trying to lag yeah, it. Yeah, watch cross side though. Exactly. He might scratch. Yeah, that's no good. Oh, look, he got lucky. Oh, he hit the point. He caught the point. And look where the cue ball went. Jesus. Now what do you do here? I have no clue. What would you do here? I'd roll the cue ball. Oh can't no, I can't. You can't. You can't. No. Fifteen's hanging in the side. That's right. Yeah. I I guess I would take a just take a bank at it at the other pocket. He's going to try to tie the nine yeah, up. He was so dead in the water yeah. there. He was dead in the water there. Now Sandro got a little bit fortunate there where the cue ball went down the table. But Jeff put himself... Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Oh, boy. Well, Jeff put himself in this position when he attempted to run the rack out with the eight ball tied yeah. up. So, you know, by rights, he probably shouldn't win the game. But if he don't make this, he's not going to He's gonna lose. Boy, he hit that ball nice, too. That was a good shot. He's made some nice shots here the last couple games. Okay, now if this goes in, it'll be 14 more for Enrique. Enriquez, I mean, and he'll go to 28. Jeff made all his uh, group, so he gets seven more. So it should be 28 to 13. And after this, if he gets to 66, is the match over? He has to get to 66. I mean, but then they're not playing two out of three. Or no, no, no. It's one, it's one race. One, yeah. one race. He has right. to get there, you know, with a win. Oh, I got you. Yeah. But once he hits that, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like, my, I like where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already at 28. The only thing really in, in Jeff's favor here is he's gotten one ball less than the maximum he could get in two losses. So that that can help him later on if he can win a couple of games and hold Sandro to like one or two balls in each rack. Mm -hmm. you know, or if he could, you know, shut him out in a couple, he could really stretch his lead out.
Look at his, he's, he's nervous. Oh yeah. He, And you know, too, Bobby, uh -huh. that just that you mentioned that, and that, that this is, you know, w we never wish anybody any anything bad out there, especially from up here. But it is kind of nice, because it's a change, to see real nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, see the guy's hands shaking, because yeah. we don't see that at the at the professional level. And uh, it just it just <coughs> it adds a little bit more reality uh -huh. to yeah. the to That's what's fun. going on out there and. And just how affected you can be by playing under the TV lights and, uh -huh. you know, three cameras and commentary and all of that. And you can be sure the players are aware of that, even though they, they'll tell you they're not. I guess he's going to probably start off with the one. What well, else? I think he has to. He really doesn't have a good stripe to shoot other than that 13 ball. The ball in the triangle is the seven, and that has side pocket and far corner pocket. For and as, as, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, for people at home, let's play an eight ball. You uh, got, the main thing is trying to get those trouble balls out quick. You can't right. leave those, tra those those jammed up balls to the last, you know what I mean, like he did right. last game. Exactly. It's He's one of the... Uh, <coughs> One of the best uh, rules of, of play to follow is get your problems off the table as Quick. early as possible. You know, I'm, I'm learning here, as I know you are, this is the first time either one of us have watched uh, th this, uh, this discipline, the USAPL, but what I'm starting to maybe realize a little bit is maybe the reason Jeff starts shooting balls off, even though he knows he may not get out in that inning, is he's trying to get as many balls as uh -huh. he can as quickly as he can and then hope he gets another turn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure there are many different strategies to playing USAPL. And uh, it's kind of uh, fascinating to, to learn. Look at that, he went right through that gap. He's trying to move them balls. Got to shoot this and shoot 13 next. Mm, slow down. Or hurry up. Yeah, or hurry up, one or the other. <laughs> he stopped on the 50 yard line. Yeah. I wouldn't move the stripe in the triangle if I didn't have to because it's it's messing up the other uh -huh. guy. But I'm not sure if he can hit another stripe. I don't, I don't think he can. I think that's it. Maybe fan it and just come to the short rail. I might. That's yeah. a good camera shot for us. Yeah, he called safe. Don't move it too far. That was a good effort. He was trying to get behind them yeah, balls. He yeah. used that little inside English, trying to spin up behind those balls. That was a pretty, mm -hmm. that was a good try. Good shot, boy. Split the, split the wicket, huh? We've seen a lot of that the last day and a half. Yeah. These long shots that they just are going dead center. I know. I would play this and draw the cue ball and then shoot the seven next, right? That's what I would do, right? You had natural uh, natural uh, path to draw right into the middle diamond. Well, you know, he still <coughs> can shoot the four, then the seven, and shoot the five in the two hole. Right what he's probably going to have to do. Yeah. Just roll this into the cushion and bounce out three, four inches. And let's see what kind of angle he's got. I think he got on the wrong side. Yeah. Kind of hard to tell. 
No, he's all right. Yeah, he just he really can't go too far. He can't go too yeah, far, Jeff. It. Goodbye. Yep. See, now, again, on a shot like that, you just have to think in your mind, what's the worst thing that can happen here? I can go too far. I've got to err on the other side. I, if I don't go far enough, I still have a shot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of a repeat of the last rack where he got all the way almost to the end and couldn't get out, and Sandro was able to get out after a fortunate roll on the cue ball, but let's see what he's going to do here. There's no worse feeling than leaving one ball and the other guy's got all his balls oh. hanging. They're like, oh, God, you know. Yep, and nothing's it's, tied up. Yeah. And they can just they can get out of position, do all kind of things, they're still going to get out on you. And if they get out of line, they're going to hook you. I know. It's just like, you're like, oh, man. There's like just no way to win, you know. Unless something really freaky happens. Mm That ball good. Nice shot. He's got to bounce back out, shoot in the same pocket. The eight. He could just bunt it and shoot it in the side. He's coming back, I believe. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, I thought he missed it. I did too. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be another 14 for Sandro. He'll go to 42. Jeff made six balls. He'll go to 19. So now I think you can start to get a feel for the for the scoring here. Sandro still needs th at least three more wins to, to hit his number. No, excuse me, uh, two more. Two more would give him 28. That would put him at 70. <coughs> Sandro is from Waltham, Massachusetts. It's a suburb of Boston. The reason I know that is that's where I was originally from. And Jeff is from Aurora, Colorado. Beautiful part of the state, too, Aurora. Too cold. Oh, yeah. Anything under 90 is too cold for you. That ain't that the truth. I was in Chicago for a year. I could <coughs> you got to be tough as a two dollar steak to live in Chicago. God, is that place cold. <coughs> well that's yeah I know it's amazing. Right there on that right there on the lake. Mm-hmm. I think he can shoot the stripes because they look like they all have a pocket. Uh-huh. Start with the one with the four, 14 there in the side. The 11 go in the side. You can get through the gap. You just have to get the 10 out of I'd the way. I'd shoot the 10 first. Yeah. Go back and forth. <coughs> mm -hmm. You know. Of course, he's shooting the other one. They all go too, though, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, they all go too. Just yeah, it just uh, the roll three. Roll up there and shoot yeah. the three. Shoot the six in the side, but the eight don't. The eight only got one hole, one 
two pockets, of course, make, makes it tough. Yeah, and I and I would save the one for the last ball because of where the eight is. I'd shoot the three and then the six in the side, the flow five. forward, yeah. shoot the five, and then go down by the head string. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. He's got to get a good angle on the six or else he's going to run into the nine. Right. You know, he's yeah. I wonder if he could just bump the 12 with the cue ball. That would have done it for him, but now he's uh, going the wrong way with the cue ball. So my guess is he's going to take the one out next because yeah. he's just not going to have any choice. But, you know, once the six is gone, there's a lot of room down there to get to the eight in the side off the five. Yeah, it, there is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he can, he's got a whole half the table, though. Yeah. He's got to go draw the ball here and draw it into the 13. You know, one rail and going down and hit this ball. Yeah, I like that path. You know, still just right into the 13. Like, no, well, look at this. Look at this shot. <laughs> That's a heck of a shot there. We didn't he, see that. He, he found a better route than we did. We didn't see that, did we? I didn't. There's Jeff. He kind of had the same reaction we did, I think. I know, like, what? Where would that come from? Yeah. Well, we're going to see what he's going to He's going to have to put some juice on this one, some low left and spin back. Yeah. I think as if, if, if he's straight in. I wonder if he's got a little angle where he could just drag it straight no, down. I don't think so. No? Look at this shot. And it goes now. It's, he can slide the ball in there. Let's see if uh, JB can get us a close-up of that. And it we can goes, see whether though. it goes. Well, I think it will slide. By the, the, the pockets have been very forgiving here the first couple of days. Yeah, this ball goes. He's making look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good shot there. Nice and easy. Very softly. Oh, oh he over uh -oh, did it. Uh -oh. You could almost see his tip come up. Uh -huh. You know, he kind of jabbed at it uh -huh. at the last minute. So there's the first little shoot yourself in the foot uh, by Sandro, and now Jeff has a chance. But uh, he still got all seven there. I'd shoot nine, this. ten, exactly. Yeah, nine, ten, fourteen, eleven. Mm-hmm. Then the two in the kitchen. Fourteen and the thirteen. I mean the nine, thirteen. I'd shoot the 12 right now, too. Bobby. The 8's hanging. I would, too. I wouldn't risk this long of a shot. Mm -hmm. Unless it doesn't go. But I think it does. Yeah. Uh-oh. Hit that a little weak. Well, he's 8 inches closer to it than he was. This ain't automatic.
How did I know? You jinxed him. How did you know. I know? He's my guy. I don't want to jinx him. <laughs> wow. You got to make sure you overcut that ball. You know what I mean? Hit it as thin as you can hit it. You can't hit it too thin. Exactly. <clears throat> well, and that's why we both thought when he played the 12, he left himself too long a shot uh -huh. on the on the other ball where he couldn't get closer to the eight. Oh, that's a big, big turnover there. That's a, that's a seven point turnaround because Jeff's going to get seven because he ran on his whole group. So he'll be a 26. It's a 56. And yeah, it'll be 56. And now Sandro can win the match if he wins this rack. Yep. Now let's say Jeff had gotten out there and Sandro had made all his balls, he would have gone uh, from 42 to 49, and Jeff would have gone uh, to 33 from 19. And Jeff looks pretty, pretty relaxed over there. I think he's just having a good time, and once again, that's, that's really what we like to see here. still playing over there on the table. They, I don't know what they're doing. Bobby, I think it's either they're just practicing or it was a two out of three set race. Yeah, must and be. I think it maybe it was because this is the third uh, set that yeah. they've started. Oops. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I didn't break them very well at all. Look, I'm all gagged up there. And look at these balls. Oh, my God. It's now, this is, this is ball in hand anywhere, I believe. Corridor would like this layout. Yeah. Another unique aspect of the USA pool rules that uh, I want to let you know is there, a ball was made on the break, a 10 ball, but because he scratched, that 10 ball does not count for either guy. So, so now the most the points you can make if you lose is six? If you take stripes. Yeah. Balls are all jimmied up. <clears throat> In between racks, if we get a moment, we're going to switch the camera over to table two because the ladies' match that's in progress over there that I think you saw the very beginning of before we, we started this one <coughs> is um, a semifinal in the women's open nine ball division. And uh, the two players playing over there are Chris Christina Jeff from Las Vegas and uh, Stephanie Gones from Dayton, Ohio. Now the loser of that match will finish third, fourth, and receive $250. The winner is going to go to the final, which we're going to have for you next. Um, the opponents for the, for the ladies, uh, the other semi that's in progress now is Taylor Hansen and Robin Werner. Taylor's from uh, Mankato, Minnesota. Robin is from right here in Las Vegas. And uh, Young Taylor Hansen, I believe, is 16 years old, and she won the women's division at the U.S. Bar Table Championships in Reno a couple of months ago. I believe it might have been the nine ball. 
And you say she's 16? She may even be a little younger than That's that, but so I think cool. she's around 16. That's and she's so got cool. <laughs> her younger brother, Tristan, is like 14, and he was there. And you don't want no part of him, Bobby Cotton. Let me <laughs> tell you that. You don't want no part of him. No, but no, listen. You, now, you got that messed up. Ain't no 14 you're going to beat me playing no games. Forget about it. Well, I was merely trying to give the emphasis that the young man is a pretty accomplished player at 14 and if he years does, old. I might try to just scare him out of his money. I'll, I'll try to muscle him out of his game. I'm just, I'm just take teasing. Take the kid's allowance and his lunch I'm, money, too, I'm right? I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> but anyway, I hope, I, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to root for either one, but if, if we do get Taylor Hansen over here, you're going to be extremely yeah, impressed, as, as I'm sure you were with, with any of these women. I love these kids playing pool good like that. I get a kick, kick out of it. You're the next generation of pool. And if uh, you guys at home would like to actually watch Taylor Hansen or young Tristan, um, there are some matches of theirs on the CSI YouTube channel from uh, the uh, U.S. Bar Table, the 22nd U.S. Bar Table, uh, end of March, which we had in uh, Reno. Well, these balls, look, look at these balls, will you? What a mess this is. Yeah. Well, Jeff has the solids, I believe, uh, doesn't he? Because yeah. I thought he started with the four. He just, you know, I mean, I just don't know what to do here, you know. I tell you what, he's got it, what I would, I don't know. I would, um. This is a mess. Yeah, but now, no, well, he can't do that. No, I thought he could. I just don't see. Even if he can make the carom into his stripe, then what? Even if another ball hangs, the nine's his tr his problem ball. <clears throat> yeah, he, he's this this is a bad spot for old Sandro. Well, you know, I see one or two possibilities. Cut the 11 to his right. There's Jeff again. Cut the 11 to his right. Try to move the, one, the 9 or the 1. I'm not sure he can do that. <coughs> or shoot the uh, 15 and come back here where you can maybe play the 11 in one of the side pockets and try to do something. And then you the last I'll possibility would be banking the nine cross side. You know what I would do? I'd bank the 11 back there and put it with all these balls and just jam them up. I would. I'd bank the 11 back yeah, to the I two. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And just jam them up. Yeah. And just go from there. Yeah. You know? Well. Because you can't try to <coughs> run out from here. When he moves, if we can get JB's camera, we might can see the angle that he's got into the corner pocket to see whether or not he can actually go into the, the nine or the one with the cue ball. Not sure if we can get that got shot. There we go. Thank you, JB. Can we get that again? He might be just shooting the leather and try to bank the nine across That's the side. That's true, next. yeah. But he does have the angle to go into it. But he steered it a little bit. That's the best thing he could have done just right there. <laughs> that helped too. Yeah, yeah. Knocking the two in and blocking the pocket. Okay, now that ball as well does not count because <coughs> it wasn't made by the person who has that group. But that's what I asked you earlier. Well, I was wrong, and I, I, I didn't oh, know. Okay. I didn't know. I, I so was just, it, it was yeah, just so clarified me. Yeah. yeah, it was just clarified by Stephen for me. I didn't know, and I didn't, I, I, as I didn't know about the, uh, the ball on the break I'm not, after the scratch. I'm not one to say I told you so. You know, you know me. I'm <laughs> that's the first mistake. I've known you for several years. That's the f first mistake you've ever made. Honestly, no. Well, you know. It might be the second, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen this game played before. Cut me a little slack, Bobby. <laughs> I know. You're doing You're perfect. I, I appreciate it. Listen, that's how we all learn. You learn from your I mistakes. Like this, I like the scoring. I really do. 
I do too. I'm. Uh, I think it's great. If I'm a fan. Yeah, I like getting points. If you lose the game, if you make all the balls. Right. And 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 now it just makes good sense. You shouldn't receive points for balls that you didn't pocket right. or were illegally pocketed. Look at this. He's banking the nine cross corner. Look at, boy, he, he had put a pretty good stroke on that. Look where the cue ball is. He, he, did, he did good. That might that got that might win the money right there. He's forcing to shoot the one. If he misses it, this guy can get out. Yeah, and Sandro knows that no matter what. He can't lose the match on that this rack or the next rack. He, he just made a monster shot. Yeah. Drawing that ball back, getting behind them ball. This is a tough shot on the one. I'll tell you something, that's a tough shot. Right. <clears throat> you know, ball, something like that. Knowing the match is. In the balance, yeah, right, yeah. Tough shot. This eight ball sitting funky. He's well, yeah, the, you know, he's had a nice pocket for it, the other corner pocket down here, but he'd have to be almost ball in hand position on the 11 to have the right angle to get behind the eight. Got to hit that ball good, too. That's a good shot there. He might can hit this ball, and the cue ball, go into the short rail and go straight back up, possibly. What I think he's got to do if he can, because I don't know if he can hold it there. To, for the eight in the other corner is maybe bounce off the long rail and move the eight. I don't like this. I don't know what he's doing, but I don't like this. Oh my God, look at this shot. That that's, was a world class a greatest, shot right there. That's the greatest shot in pool history. <laughs> that was tremendous. Are you kidding me? This is for the match. Oh no. I Are you kidding it. me? <clears throat> that's match. Man, what a shot he just made. Jacked wow. up and jacked up and <laughs> opened that ball up. Okay, so the final score is going to be uh, 70 for Sandro. Now, Jeff uh, had one ball illegally pocketed. I don't know what was left on the table. Yeah. So he's going to be in the low 30s. Wow, what a monster shot he's made on that last ball. 30? Okay. Okay. We, we think he was right at 30.